Today, we're going to continue the celebration of the trailblazing award-winning hit TV show, Abbott Elementary. <laughs> My first guest has received critical acclaim for his role as Gregory Eddy. Please welcome Tyler James Williams. Show up. It was for you. I love you. this I look. I came out of my school clothes and I, I came together. <laughs> you look fierce. We're happy Thank to you. have you back. Thank you so Good much be for here. being here. Yeah. You've been good. I've been good. It's been a blessing. We're it's back. Been, yes. We had a strike. We came back. We're able to get these episodes out now. Like it was so hard sitting on them. And speaking of which, what a way to come back because I just saw you guys recently at the award season. Yeah. And the whole cast was looking fierce. We, we try to do it for network TV now. We, we show up, we're ready. Look I at love these it. looks. Yeah. Now, I heard you don't, you don't care about anything until you, you know. Look at these looks. You yeah. say you ain't worried about nothing, but you get excited about like taking risks with your looks. Oh. Yeah. Tell me about that. Okay. Award shows, I've been going to these since I was really young, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not always as exciting as they used to be. That's just, that's just part of mm -hmm. it. So for <laughs> me, I get really excited when I find something risky to put on. That's when I, I know like, when something's about to happen. Yes, this is that's risky. That's when I know. And if it's just a black suit, I'm not wearing it. I'm sorry. I understand. Life is too short for just a black suit. It got to be exciting, especially exactly. when it's for the awards. You yes. want to have your moment. Yes, yes. we got to be there. We got to show out. Wow. We gotta, we gotta have a, a, a little moment. There. A little moment. And then I saw photos of your co-stars at the SAG Awards. Mm -hmm. Please tell me what is going on here. <laughs> What's going this on there? This is like a show moment. It's precisely show. what you think. <laughs> is that a flask? That there? is a flask. That is Lisa shotgunning a flask <laughs> in the middle of, I'm assuming, what must have been best actor in a drama. Like, I'm not. <laughs> Cheryl is obviously shocked. I wonder um, how she put that in not. a purse. Because normally I can't get nothing but a, a little uh, almond or a, uh, a peppermint in my little right. purse. Right, well, because the thing also, we don't really eat. You, right. You be, you're sitting there for four or five hours, no food. No food. You're just hungry, so she decided to, to drink her meal that evening. And I, I don't uh, disagree with that decision. Y'all got all the highlights. Okay, so you got to have a risky outfit right. for the awards, a yes. flask in your bag if for you your can. meal. If you can. I'm taking notes, okay? Because yes. I'm going to make sure. Maybe I could sneak some popcorn in mine. I think you totally could. Okay, tell me what's the highlight for the award season for you? Quinta won an Emmy. She won an Emmy. Wow. Yes! Emmy. She won an Emmy and like, what I love about this win is she won last year as a writer, mm -hmm. but people underestimate Quinta as an actor. Wow. She needed a separate award for yeah. that. The work that I watch her do day in and day out deserve to be recognized, not just as somebody who's running the show. Right. Because people don't really understand, she runs up to the writer's room, gives notes, talk about things, runs back downstairs, is on set, on camera, then runs into the editing bay to cut things together. So the fact that she can stay focused right. in all of those jobs and do them well, each one needs to be recognized. That is true. <laughs> you moved to New York, huh? You, you shoot yeah. here, but you moved back to so, New York. So, I'm from New York originally. Uh-huh. Um, I, strangely enough, got brought out to L.A. for the first time when I was a kid doing a show about New York. Mm. So, Everybody Hates Chris took me from New York and brought me to L.A. Wow! Yeah, it was... That's so crazy! Yeah, it's, 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 Hollywood is strange in that way. <laughs> And I hadn't been able to move back since just because life was too busy. And yeah. then over the strike this last year, it was like, I'm going home. Like, I, I need normalcy. I and totally that's, understand. you know what I mean? Yes. Because it's just, it's, this is where we work. This is how we get the show done and all of that. But you need to be able to walk the streets mm -hmm. and just kind of be in a homey atmosphere. So I went back. I come here to work and then I go back home. Oh, and yeah. is it true you and your brothers live together? Yeah. I love yeah, that. The three of us. Yeah. Nice. What used to be, it's crazy because like when we were younger, we tried to get as far away from each other as possible. <laughs> Around that age. Oh. <laughs> but then as we got older, I think we have a very unique experience. We yeah. each, you know, were on or led shows when we turned 13. 
So it just happened to play out that way. So we're the only ones who really understand each other's right. experience in that specific way. And then at some point, we realized we didn't need that much space. And we're like, why don't we just all live together on both coasts? And on it's been beautiful. Yeah, on both coasts. It's been beautiful ever since. I love that for yeah. you guys. Yeah. Aww. Will you stick around for a little bit? I ain't got nothing to do. OK, we want to keep you here, all right? Norman Tyler, we'll be right back. We're back with Tyler James Williams. That music got a hold of me. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have had some amazing guest stars. Let's see, Ooh. you had Bradley Cooper? Yes. How was that? Honestly, the best part of Bradley coming in and the episode airing is that now we can talk about it. Y'all don't understand <laughs> how hard it is to keep this stuff quiet. <laughs> like, we're under all types of contracts and gag orders. And then the weird thing is we do award shows or, like, I'll sit down and I'll talk about it. Everybody will ask, who's coming in? Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to get sued, y'all, please. <laughs> so Bradley was great. He was there. You know, he came in. It was... It's amazing how, like, when actors are really great, they can pop into a show. He was there for maybe two or three hours. Mm. Found our rhythm immediately. Wow. Found his jokes, found the camera, which, you know, as an actor, you get taught not to look into camera. So we spend so much time trying to get actors to break that mm. so they can get comfortable with it. He immediately caught in. It was, it was actually really beautiful. We've had some other... Chris Summers came in this year. Oh, okay. Tatiana Ali came in this year. Nice. Like, we've had some real heavy hitters. And they we're not done. We're we're uh -oh. we're not done. Um, don't tell it. Don't today. get that. Okay, literally, somebody came I just in came today. from work. Someone came in today. But you can't tell it. I, again, I don't want to get sued. Okay, okay, okay. Have time for this. We're not gonna push it too far. Okay, so I know your character mm -hmm. and Quince's character. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little thing going on. But would you like? How do you feel about you know the relationship progressing with y'all characters? <sighs> You know, Ooh, right? <laughs> I heard somebody's yes. But, uh oh, how you feel um, about it? I hate to say it, I know everybody's always mad at me for this. I don't necessarily want to see them together. No. No. Is this an actor's choice? No, I mean, okay, it's partially an actor's choice, but also somebody who, like, I read a lot of scripts all the time. I watch mm -hmm. a lot of TV, a lot of film. I don't think that we see displays of platonic love between two people. Mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. I think it's really easy to go right to, they have feelings for each other, therefore they should be together. Right. I like this dynamic of them exploring, withholding that, and just actively loving each other where they are. Oh. That, I, that I like to see more. Okay. That'll bring something different into yeah, the table. Yeah, I think it's time for that. It doesn't, people need to, I think TV allows people to see things that could be their lives for the yeah. first time. And I think seeing a healthy friendship that is deeply caring about one another in a work atmosphere needs to be shown more than a relationship. Okay, Director Williams. All right. We're not mad. They seem to like that idea. They're not too mad about it. Okay, I hope you don't get mad at this because I stole y'all whole chalkboard and I have like, I'm going to That's where that went. Okay, mm -hmm, great. Mm -hmm. We've been looking I for that. I snuck over there and I need you to sign the, the class photo. Oh. Can I bring it out for you to sign? Right on over here, yes, sir. Of course, there it is. Yes, yes, Wonderful. yes. And you'll sign oh, right this on our newest, over here. This is our newest cast your, member. That's, yeah. Yes, I, you see, I made myself yes, a manifesting. It's a vision board as well. It's my vision, it board. vision board. Get it? I love it. He's signing, guys. All right, let me. I, I can't cover Shirley Ralph's face. No, no, definitely. Me. Oh, so don't do just... that to Miss, Miss Shirley Ralph. All right. He's signing the job. More with Tyler James Williams. We'll be right back. Be on time for class. We're back with Tyler James Williams. Now, representation in education is very important. Yeah. As I was telling you earlier, somehow you inspired my cousin who never thought about teaching, and he's now teaching school. I love it. So, I love it. Like, especially with black men, how, how yeah. does that make you feel? Um, it's, it's huge. You know, every now and then we get a chance to not just make art, but art that actually inspires people in their everyday lives. Right. Um, you know, it wasn't until I had to really tackle the character of Gregory that I realized that I didn't have a black male teacher to pull from. Mm. With any actor you pull from your lived experience right. to try to connect the dots between you and the character. And I didn't have anybody. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I was so down to do it was because now, hopefully, that can happen. Mm -hmm. That the minute you show people a glimpse, they yes. now know they can do it. Yes. Um, 
So that's been huge for me and really important in the midst of, you know, the ratings and the awards and all of that. What's really important is I'm hearing that there are more black men in the educational field. That's major. Because that's so important. Well, we have someone in the audience that you've inspired. He's a middle school math teacher, Ryan Smith. But yet, get on down here. It's amazing. It just makes you realize just how rare of a thing it is. Yeah. So this, this is beautiful to see that you are a teacher. How does it feel to me, Tyler? It's amazing. Um, I've been watching him since Everybody Hates Chris, oh, which I'm wow. sure everyone has as well. Um, <laughs> phenomenal in there. Um, this is just so amazing. Everybody Hates Chris, Let It Shine, and now Ab Elementary, which like you said earlier, you're able to inspire people, yeah. inspire young black males. Because I also never had anyone as a teacher, mm. a black male teacher, come in my life and say, hey, you know, inspire me or be able to say, you can be a teacher too. Mm -hmm. That was, that's a beautiful yes. thing. As I've been like talking to educators who have been advocating for this for years, they were saying there hasn't been an invite no one's invited black men to join the educational field. Mm. And I'm happy that this can do that in a way. Um, what do you teach? I teach math, seventh grade math. Seventh grade yeah. math. Oh. I love that. What's your favorite thing about teaching? Um, honestly, just building those relationships with the students because in my opinion, a student's not gonna wanna learn right. if they don't wanna come to school. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these students don't have meals, don't have positive right. role models at home, so when they come here, where are those role models? Right. You know, where are those people for those students that say, hey, we got you, we're gonna take care of you. So if you can't build a relationship with a student, they're not gonna wanna learn anyway. So I think that's the most important thing uh, in the school system. Before the content, before the math, before all of that, you have to build a relationship with that student. How long have you been teaching? This is now my second year teaching. Last year I actually taught algebra at oh. high school. Okay. Now, this year I'm teaching uh, seventh grade math, and it's ironic because I, um, I'm teaching at the old school that I also went to. So That yeah. is lovely. Full circle. That's a beautiful full circle. And luckily, I get, to, I get to coach as well, so I'm a football coach and a track coach, and I'm working with all the same people who taught me and coached me and, and gave me the same thing. Wow. Oh, my goodness. What do, you, what do your students say? Like, how do they feel about you as a teacher? Because you look like you may be the kid's favorite teacher. Are you, like, their favorite? I like to think that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the, the good thing about it is I'm the youngest teacher. So okay. I relate to them the most. Yes, yes. that's very um, important. With, like, TikToks and things that are trending in the world. And um, I think being the youngest teacher allows me to just be able to connect to them in some ways that other teachers who have been there for so long mm -hmm. aren't able to. So, um, I, I think I'm the cool teacher. Um, it feels like it. It feels like it. I want to say I am. They hang around me a lot. And I teach seventh grade. Sometimes I have the eighth graders that just want to come in and just hang out and kick it. And I'm perfectly right. fine with that. So I okay. still try to stay hip. They think 25 is old, though. They, see, they yeah. got you thinking you well, old, huh? <laughs> Yes. In seventh grade, everything is old. Everything is old. Everything is old. <laughs> yeah. But that's the fact that you've stepped into that and embraced that. Again, these are the things that we write about that we have whole episodes on Gregory embracing that, that mm -hmm. position, but you're actually on the ground doing it. Yes. That's the hard work. Yes. I the just show up thing. and I say yes. the words and right. stand on the mark and do the things. You're actually doing that work and affecting people on the ground in a real tangible way. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we've always hoped for this, but I think outside of Abbott and all of that, this is what needs to be celebrated. You making that choice to do that. Thank you so much. We need more. Thank you. He said it. Yeah. So, are you the Gregory of your school? Oh, um, it feels like that. I mean, look at it. <laughs> I, and y'all kind of favor, <laughs> too. They right? favor a bit, don't they? Just a little bit. <laughs> if I I'm think compared so. to anyone, I guess that's a good comparison, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it definitely feels like that. Um, my whole life, uh, when it comes to teaching, just feels like a bunch of 
crazy situations. They always want to tell me their gossip. They always want to tell me what's going on in the world. <laughs> and it's so funny because they do in Abbott Elementary, they always look into the camera and I just feel like my whole life is just when they tell me something, I just... <laughs> oh, 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 you gonna get... Yeah, I mean, since like, you already setting it up, can y'all give it to us, the, the stare? At, Come on. Which one? You got the, it. The, you hit yours first. I'll okay, follow you okay. up. Bam, right here in this camera. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, there it go. He got it? He got it? He got, got it. it. Okay, okay. Oh, well, that's lived experience. I can see it in his face. Okay. He, that, that's, he's got the reel on the ground. <laughs> Typically, I'm like this moment. as well. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on? But yeah. yeah. For that's the most how you... part, that's how it feels. But I've definitely been compared to that. Um, apparently, from some people, I guess we look like each other. You made the. Yeah, I got a little favor. But um, yeah, we I think just being a black male in teaching, mm -hmm. and also what they're doing with the show, him being a black male, um, portraying a teacher as well is the comparison, and, yeah. and we need that. And need before that. Abbott Elementary, there were no comparisons of young black male teachers, right. at least right. to my um, knowledge. So or at least that, for our generation. Exactly. Yeah. So now that we have that, it's like, okay, he's representing it on TV, I can represent it in class, and they're both pretty accurate. That's that we gave me done. chills. That's how change happened. Thank y'all so much for that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Tyler. You know, we got a little gift for you, too. Oh, God. Let's bring it on now. Oh, yeah. Maybe this will make you even cooler with the kids at school. You got some Abbott Elementary merch from Warner Brothers shots and, and, and items for your classroom. Hopefully they earn you some cool points with them kids. I hope so. And keep inspiring the youth, both of you guys. Please, thank you, Tyler. It's important what you do. It's very important what you do, Ryan. Keep yeah. up the great work, and y'all continue to be that great representation for our babies in the school. Abbott Elementary airs Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on ABC. We'll be right back. As America's Diner, Denny's loves to feed people body, mind, and soul, which is why they're committed to shining a light on layered stories that celebrate authentic conversations around mental health. We're calling these stories Stacks of Love. Our next guest spent years struggling to accept his identity, but with the help of a friend, he found the courage to live his truth. From Kansas City, Missouri, please welcome Ford McClaney. It's so nice to see you. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness. So we're also proud of you for sharing your story. How does it feel to finally be your true self? It's been a humbling experience. Um, I think to have the kind of reception that I did and to have, you know, people kind of flooding in my inbox and really just kind of opening up to their stories too mm -hmm. and telling me about themselves. It's just been a total humbling experience and I'm just really grateful to be able to be that for other people now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been great. I, I, we can, I can feel your joy as you came Thank out. You. you know, you, it's, it's a celebration for yourself. Thank you. At least you should feel Thank that you. way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can't imagine you having to hide, like, you know, who you were for years. What was that like? You know, high school and college, it was a bit of a rough experience for me. Like, I was just kind of a different kid growing up. You know, I was into diving. Other kids are into soccer and football. And, um, I just kind of had something on my shoulders that I wasn't ready to deal with yet. Mm -hmm. And so, like, as I started to become older and start to navigate those things and really um, kind of figure out what was going on with me, it, it just became a little bit easier. Wow, okay. How did it feel when you saw Ryan's story and what made you want to reach out to him? Ryan's story was kind of a saving grace in a dark time. Yeah. Um, Ryan was able to be the friend to me that I needed when I was in the dark place. Um, Ryan taught me how to be authentic to myself. He showed me that it was okay to be whoever I wanted to be and that you're never alone right. in, in this world that we have, you know? Yes. Um, we're not alone and um, there's so many people that can share in this story and my story is not unlike anybody else's story. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that deal with this. So just to be here right now and be able to share it with you all, it's a really humbling experience. Wow. It's brave. It's courageous. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Thank you. You know, like... Thank you. What was the main thing about Ryan's story that inspired you to tell your truth? He showed me that 
people are still gonna love you. Mm -hmm. I was so scared that I was not going to be loved um, by my peers, by my family. Um, I was just frightened of the whole idea and Ryan really took me under his wing and he said, you can do this. Um, you can be whoever you wanna be and your real friends are gonna love you no matter what. Real friends. Exactly. That's the key. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. Well, okay, I wanna keep talking to you. Will you stick around for a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. All right, moving forward after the break. We'll be right back. We're back with Diving Post for McClaney. Okay, all right, so, you know, Ryan has inspired you. Have you ever met him before? We've made some plans to meet. Maybe I'll go up to San Francisco, maybe he'll come to Kansas City, but we've never met yet. You know what, this is a happy place. I think you should meet him. I really do. Come on out, Ryan! Should be here. Ryan. Ryan. Well, how are you feeling for it? So happy. <laughs> it's so good to finally meet him. You don't know how much you did for me, man. But that, I'm so happy to meet you. I mean that a lot. Or I, that means a lot. Yeah. This is so beautiful, y'all. So how proud are you of Ford? Yeah, uh, incredibly proud. Um, it takes a lot of courage to go on that journey of self-discovery because it's kind of something that goes on on your own at mm -hmm. first uh, for LGBTQ people. Um, so to do that all on your own and then have the courage to like reach out to someone and in his case a stranger who he didn't really know is incredibly courageous and yeah. a lot of LGBTQ people demonstrate that courage of self-discovery and then finding their support systems and I'm happy that Ford got to find his. Yes. Yeah. How, yeah, how does it make you feel to see like the impact that you've had on him with your own journey? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's weird because it's really, it's really humbling. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of when we were first talking and going through it, I didn't know the impact, as much as the impact I was having as I obviously did. So to hear about it now and to learn that he's able to um, share his story now with other people, to hopefully their, our story can kind of emulate throughout the country or throughout other spaces for other, not just athletes, but other LGBTQ people to feel confident and comfortable with themselves, to reach out to their own support systems or a stranger or family and friends. And I think it's important for people on the receiving end of that to, uh, to be open, to be uh, filled with love, and to lead with love, and to create space and places for them to, to be themselves and to live authentically. Awesome. And Ford, I heard that you, that's something you want to do to help others. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, I mean, anything that I can do to help give back what I was given. Mm -hmm. You know, like what Ryan did for me was so big that it had an impact on me to do this going forward. Like, this is how I want to this is how I want to help change people's lives just like he did for me. And if I can do that for other people, I'm happy to. That's your goal. Yeah, that's my goal. All right, we love that here at The Happy Place. <laughs> and our friends at Denny's heard your story and are so inspired by your openness and your mission to help others proudly live their truth. So we want to give you $10,000 to help other athletes just like you achieve their dreams. Oh my goodness. Here is this for your, all your effort. I hope. Wow. Yes, thank you. How does this make you feel? Like, and, and what is it, how will this help you achieve that goal? Unbelievable. You know, like I've always wanted to start a scholarship for athletes. Um, I want to empower other LGBTQ athletes to be themselves going into college, not figuring themselves out after, but just really understanding themselves and. So this is just so awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Jennifer. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You're awesome, and you're awesome. You're making such a difference for so many. Keep up the amazing work, and thank you guys for being here. Will you come back again and see us? Keep us posted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Denny. Thank you. We'll be right back. My next guest is a talented actor who stars in the Netflix movie, Shirley, alongside Regina King. Please welcome Dorian Mystic. Oh, that's 
my favorite color. You're That's what shy. they told me. That's why I wore it. I love it. Yeah. They said you got to make yourself comfortable, make her comfortable by wearing her favorite color. That's right. I love keeping it bright. Uh -huh. Welcome to the happy place. Thank you. It's good to see you. Now, good to the be here. last time we saw each other was on the set of Monster Dude. What do you remember about what? that? Uh, yes. I remember losing my dog. I remember too. Yeah. Oh my God. Here's the thing you were the person who really pushed me over the edge. <laughs> me? Yeah, not because of anything. I, I just remember our trailers were next to each other. Uh -huh. And I went to my trailer to check on my dog between takes, and I couldn't find him. But I had to go back and get on screen. And uh -huh. I saw you. And I was like, yo, I can't find my dog. I don't know what's going on. We get on set, and I'm trying to go through my monologue, you know, keep going, you know, ladies and gentlemen of the court. But I was so mm -hmm. not focused. So I was like, ladies and gentlemen, man, what, who, ha. And then you're like, did they find your dog, baby? And that, because you got that motherly voice. And Mama so, I, just, I mean, it made me want to cry. Oh. He said, did you find your dog, baby? And I was like, no, I ain't found my dog. <laughs> Listen. And the producers came out, and they were like, listen, what, what happened? I said, like, I can't find my dog. Yes. And he shut down production and went and found my dog. I was so worried about your dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at him. He's a dog. Look how precious he is. That, that was the mama hood coming out at you. But let me tell you this. That's the very reason why I don't bring my cat here too often, because I think of that moment, I would lose my mind. If my cat got away, all y'all, y'all would have to help me look for him, OK? <laughs> I learned from you. I'm going to confess a little something. It seems like, as I do love my dog, mm -hmm. like no other. Yes. But we had only had him for six months. Uh -huh. And I was in New York with the dog by myself, uh -huh. and my wife was in LA. Okay. First time I took the dog by myself. So if I lost the That's dog, right. I was going to lose my wife. See? See? <laughs> also, you had a subtext yeah, behind Yeah, there was a lot going on. Ah. There was a lot happening. <laughs> Yeah, I was facing losing a dog and losing a, a family, you That know? sounds about right. That's, uh, I'm glad you found the dog yeah. then, in that case. Yeah. And it's so good to see. Speaking of motherness, I heard your mama is here in the audience. Where's she at? Yeah, mom, you don't hear her? I don't hear her. No. Look, I see a wave. Yeah. Hey, mama! Mama Pat. Welcome to the happy... Mama Pat! Mom, 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 <laughs> welcome to the happy place. <laughs> now, tell me about this. So, okay, you're a DJ, too. Yes. DJ... Tailwind Turner. That's right. your DJ name. That's my name. Okay, tell yeah. us all about DJ Tailwind Turner. Well, Tailwind Turner is a character from um, the Cosby show. He was a very small character. Uh -huh. He was like, they said, he was Heathcliff's uh, nemesis on the, on the track because mm. he could run really fast. When that episode came out, I was a little kid playing baseball, uh -huh. and all of our players on our team had uh, nicknames. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a terrible baseball player. I can't <laughs> hit. I could barely catch. I could throw kind of good. Okay. But what I can do is run. Okay. So they gave me the nickname Tailwind Turner. Or ah. Missick, Missick, because I couldn't really hit. So they would say <laughs> Miss Missick. But either way, I, I stuck with Tailwind Turner. It stuck. And then when I started DJing, I, was, I just always remembered that nickname. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then you've been married to your wife for 12 years. How did y'all meet? Wow. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She is gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, she's a little guy. She's a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we met, um, it's so funny, we met at, uh, I was getting ready to direct a, a web series. Mm -hmm. and she came in to audition. But first, I saw her because I was walking out to the bathroom, and I just walked through the waiting area, and there was this woman, sleep, on the couch. I ain't expect you to say that. She was knocked out, <laughs> like, cuddled up, like, real deep sleep. <laughs> And I was like, wow, it's a beautiful woman. She's asleep. That's crazy. Aww. And then uh, <laughs> she comes in and auditions. She wasn't right for the role. She was a little too sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But she was perfect for my life. <laughs> However. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah. However, listen. I could not, you know, obviously, for professional reasons, you can't be at no audition saying, right. listen, this ain't the role for you, but can we go on a date? <laughs> so... My, my producer was like, I could tell you had a crush on her. Uh -huh. So he invited her to a party that I was DJing at. Aww. And um, she told me she was secretly hoping I was going to be there. Look at that. And so, yeah. Nothing is just. She came up to the booth and I said, you are so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You better know how to do it. Okay, so is it true you purposely play slow jam songs oh, yeah. to get her to dance with you? Well, oh, he real slick. I had to do it. Uh -huh. I had to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, so this is when we first met. I'm playing, and I'm like, man, I really want to talk to this girl, but I got to get this party going. Yeah. So what I decided to do, I kind of sabotaged the party, because when is the last time you've been to a club uh -huh. and someone played slow music? You played all slow jam. I played Jodeci. Had to. You better. Oh, oh he knew what to play. Yeah. 
I let her know. I was sending her messages. I play forever my lady because I want her to be forever my lady. Damn. Yeah. And she is. I play no games, man. You I play better no games. let the music speak. I had to. That is amazing. Yes, yeah, so I played that, came from behind the booth, and we were slow dancing. She's rubbing the back of my neck, and I was like, got her. Got her. <laughs> yes, that audition told you all of that. That was a muddy audition. Yeah, right, okay, right. So now let's talk about the movie Shirley. It is so awesome. So for those who don't know who Shirley was, can you give them an idea who Shirley was? Yeah, well, she was uh, a congresswoman from Brooklyn, New York, who was the first woman, black woman and woman, to run for president in 1971. Wow. 72. Yeah. This film was necessary. Necessary, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I think she shows anybody that, you know, that you belong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, 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 the, she had a lot of things going on about her that could have been perceived as weaknesses. She right. was black, she was a woman, you know, and she was a rookie mm -hmm. in politics, but she was also a believer and God worked through her and said, listen, I'm gonna take your weaknesses and make them strengths. Amen. And then she ran for president. Come on. Okay, so tell everybody who you play. All right, I play uh, Congressman Ron Dellums, mm -hmm. and he is, uh, uh, was Shirley's mentor and really good friend in uh, Congress, and he was one of the first people to step forward and support her mm -hmm. run for presidency, and then um, as you watch the movie, you'll see some things change in that relationship. But uh, he was, uh, you know, he was well known for being like outside of the, outside of the box. He's from Berkeley when they called it Berserkly. <laughs> so he was like, you know, he's, he, he was a very forward-thinking uh, politician, and he had a cool afro. So I was like, <laughs> yes, I got to do this. <laughs> you did an outstanding job. Uh, Make sure y'all check this movie out. It is really good. Yeah. Really good. Now, you know, we music heads around here, so before yeah. you go, we got something, a little something for you to wear the next time you DJ, okay? Something for me this to wear. This from The Happy Place. This oh. for you. Yeah! We can work. What? Okay. You got to rock that, okay? Oh, you got my name on it. You got your name on it. We got you, baby. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for being here, Jordan. Hey, thank you for having me. you come back, too. Shirley is available on Netflix now. Be sure to check it out. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.